Hey, what's up guys? Um, hope you're staying warm and have uh, electricity. Mine's been flickering in and out all day. Um, so we're gonna do portraits. So I want you to draw yourself or uh, someone you live with, uh, family member, um, partner, take your own pictures. Um, if you can draw live, draw live. I know it's a lot to ask somebody to sit for like three hours. So I don't expect you to do that. Um, when uh, taking your pictures, try and remain from the chest up. I'd keep a neutral expression, don't uh, smile. Um, teeth are really difficult uh, to draw and can come across uh, a little awkward. Um, what else? Oh, if uh, you wear glasses, uh, I would recommend taking those off when you take your images. It distorts your face, um, your eyes, the proportions, um, and it can be really difficult. But if you want that added challenge, of course, feel free to do that. I just wouldn't recommend it. So I have my reference images here. I'm gonna do a, a profile and a three-fourths profile. You can do yours from uh, dead center, uh, that, that's fine. Um, I just figured I'd show you the way to approach these two. Um, and then I'm gonna show you two different ways uh, of doing things. Um, so I have my charcoal pencil here. And um, don't worry so much about uh, the composition of things really study things out. Um, portraits are gonna be the most difficult thing in this class. But much like everything else, we start by breaking it up into uh, simple shapes. Gesturally, get a line down the center. That'll be, uh, that'll be where you're gonna put your nose, where the center of the face is. And since it's a, uh, a three-fourths profile, it's gonna be more that way. And then where I think my eyes are gonna be, chin, nose, okay. And avoid hands. I'm not even gonna draw that in here because um, I don't want you guys to get all messed up on that either because that's really hard. <coughs> so I have the space where I'm gonna put my nose, lips, chin. Okay, so begin, gesture, again, um, circle, so you can see how large you can make things and then start roughing in the shape of the nose. Really pay attention to um, how it moves. Don't um, just draw uh, what you think a nose is. Pay lots of attention to your images or your subject that you're drawing. See, because there's little minute details you can kind of see the other side of the nostril there. So the way it bends and moves is going to be different. And if you miss little things like that, you're going to you're going to leave yourself for an awkward spot. Now I am going to use the glasses just in case you guys decide you want to do it. Um, so gesturally draw out your glasses on either side and then draw a line connecting the tops and the bottoms. That way you can keep everything from getting wonky, one side too big, one side too large. On the tops like that. And let's see where the bottom is and bring that back here. And then same thing in the in the middle to uh, get your eyepieces level.
All right. So going for the eyes. Oh, I almost kicked that over. Okay. Now for the eyes. I'm gonna rough things in again, just like the nose, pay attention to the shape. Don't just draw an almond shape. You should be paying more attention to your image than you are on your paper here, just like we were doing with those contour drawings. Also notice how the lashes don't rest on that line of the, the eye there. Um, there's a little little spot right below. Folds of the eye, the eyelids. And it's a lot like adding makeup into things, like it'll look a little bit odd for a second. We don't want to build things up too, too much, but we do want to pay attention to um, where our shadows and our highlights are going to be after we build up. And again, with the eye, pay attention to the shape. Now you can still do this with a vine and a compressed, um, but it it drives me crazy personally because uh, I can't seem to get that variation of line um, working this size bigger. You can you can definitely uh, attack that way easier. All right, and then here's a here's a good trick. Same thing with the eyeglasses, getting the tops, the bottoms. And also take note that people's eyes one is always going to be opened more than the other. Try to capture that if you can. Sometimes it makes it look super duper awkward. <coughs> but um, just take note and know that that is a thing. And once you see it, you will not be able to unsee it in yourself or others. All right, and before I take the cheeks any further, there, I am gonna rough in the mouth here. So I'm gonna follow this, this little part because that's the center of the face. And I see right where that top lip is. And the bottom lip, don't don't try and connect it. Um, it's just uh, you'll do a lot more um, a lot more just implying that line than anything else. It'll keep that naturalistic perspective. All right, and I can see this is all correct, but my my chin probably is more extended. So I'm gonna start by working in here and start putting in the face. All right, eyebrows. I uh, always kind of plot out where they're gonna be by blocking in, but I will actually do some of this uh, more organic line work right there. All right, she's got her hoodie on here. Quickly rough that out. A 
we still want to see finished work, but this this first week we do portraits. Don't really worry about fleshing out every aspect, um, but really build up the face. All right, so I'm going to start going in and roughing in things. Um, I'm going to start with eyes by adding the lashes. Now, it's important to note that your eye is not completely white. Um, there's going to be some uh, shadow from the eyelid. Now, I'm not going to worry about so much the glasses highlights right this very moment, because we'll go back and get those as the last step. The more um, harsh lines you use, the more it's going to age your uh, your portrait. So really, really rely on those uh, those implied lines. I'm going to use a lot of hatching. Remember, we want strong, confident lines. It's OK to be sketchy at the beginning, but make sure when you're laying down your lines, they're confident, they're smooth. Make sure you're referring back to your image too. Don't just start filling things in. Keep on looking while you're working. I'll always look. sharp right here. No, I think I left it in the painting room. All right, going back to the other side here.
directional shading still. Very, very important, especially when it starts coming to the face muscles. We'll, we'll get to that here in a second. And remember the shadow in the eye. All right. That disappears around that brow. I didn't make it as, as thin as it should have been, but that's just fine. So we'll just come in on top of that. Make it disappear. Add in some shadow. All right, moving right along. Now, something you can do, I never do it because I'm, I, uh, I enjoy a little bit of mess, but you can just grab a piece of paper or something, move it around like that so you don't have as many um, smudges, but I don't mind them. And I like having that extra stuff on the paper so I can come in and move it around when I need to. Right, coming into the lips. Now that top lip is almost always going to be darker than the bottom, and a really great way to just capture that is just shade that top lip. It always reminds me of uh, that Napoleon Dynamite movie. I spent nine hours shaving, shading your upper lip. Love that movie. Anyways. Please nobody actually spend that long on these. Less is more just kind of a distill down those details into um, a little bit of shading and shadow. And just pay attention to how much things are brought out, how thin things are, how thin things are, how thick thing, <laughs> how thick and thin things are. There we go. I got there, dude. Okay. It's also important to step back, look at things. I feel a little odd about this area right here. I can see why, because it's curving too far in. It needs to keep much straighter. There we go. So next I'm gonna drop the hair in before I start shading all these big spots here. Hair. Some people do hair uh, a lot of different ways. I like 
picking out like the fabric, picking out little areas, using a lot of organic mark making. Um, some people like to draw out every strand. That's incredibly difficult. I don't recommend you doing that right now at this stage, um, just because you haven't had a lot of experience. But um, that takes a lot of uh, special detail to the shadow and light, the thick and thinness of lines. But if you, if you want to do it, go for it. If you feel like that's your calling in life, go right ahead and get into it and start now. See, and that's enough to know it's it's hair. Um, all right. I'm not even going to mess with really doing the folds in the fabric up here. Just get that shape to box in the face. shading. Now I'm going to quickly tone this with that excess that I was talking about. That's why I don't like to remove it. That way I can start working uh, with a middle tone when I do these bigger areas. All right. Start rounding in the cheeks, directional shading. Okay, I'm still gonna go darker than that, but for right now, what I'm gonna do before I bring that in is where it is I'm gonna hit some dark areas uh, with the compressed charcoal. So I have more of a range of values and just my charcoal pencil, and I'm making sure I really push those things. So when I do start adding my highlights, there'll be a great um, contrast between those. And if you hear me say one thing over and over this, uh, this term, it's all about contrast. I won't shut up about it. Because it is important. I'll just use the excess to kind of shape and put in those implied lines. Okay. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with my kneaded eraser and start building up those highlights. So it'll be white of the paper, white of the chalk, and I did get some um, opaque white ink. Um, I'm using uh, high flow acrylics, which it's essentially the same thing. Not essentially, but it does the same thing and that's what I had on hand. So I'm gonna go in here start laying out some of those highlights for um, when I put her glasses, the actual glass in. Now I'm going to where's my chalk? Oh, I'm down to the stub. I'm going to go in and start putting my glass over. And I'm going to take my pink eraser because I want some really drastic contrast. Um, I'm going to do that at the top of these glasses. Now that's not necessarily in the picture. They are white, but they, the light maybe doesn't hit them that way. But for the sake of uh, building up my drawing, I like that idea. Gives it some really nice contrast. All right. So I have my little cup here. Gonna load it. So really, any any white liquid you have, like uh, you could even use white out if you wanted, whatever you have on hand. And it's again not a requirement, but it really does punch up the level. And you can wait till that dries and you can go right back over it. Keep on building up those highlights. I'm just stick some randomly in the hair, it's blonde hair. All right, you know, I, I don't like leaving that um, like that just because it's, it's too much light space. And I, I know I, I said, you know, I know what I said, but anyways, let's 
if we deal with that. And then we'll talk for one more second. There we go. I just took my vine, did some directional shading, and I'm not gonna build it up like crazy, but just add some uh, little details, give it some dimensionality, some sort of shape. There we go. So I'm going to split this into two parts. Um, I'm going to have a video doing some ink demonstrations here in a moment. Um, feel free to watch that as well. Even if you don't decide to use ink, there's going to be something you could maybe glean from it. All right. So I'll see you guys here in a sec. 